Hey guys, it's Melanie from MelanieKham.com. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we're going to be making this adorable jewelry pouch. Look at that. So cute. Uh, Mother's Day is coming up, so I thought this would be a really cute, it's a really easy project. Ana Luisa Jewelry has partnered with me on this video, which is super cool because I love their jewelry. They use all sustainable materials, recycled gold. It's really affordable. Jewelry starting at like $39. Like here's a necklace that I picked. Uh, I thought it reminded me of safety pins, <laughs> so I thought it was a fun choice. These hoops are from there as well, and it's really high quality material, so it's meant for everyday use. Like you're not going to have it tarnish and get all messed up. Click the first link down below. You can check out their Mother's Day special and check out their site. Adorable handmade jewelry pouch. I'm going to show you how to make it. Okay, here is what you need. We have two pieces of fabric. These are each a fat quarter, and if you use two fat quarters, you can make two jewelry pouches or you can just pick one fabric and then make the one jewelry pouch you need a marking tool of some kind you can just use a standard pen or i have a water soluble pencil um, some fray check or fray guard something to use for your ties ribbon cord yarn string anything you want to do coordinating thread something to cut your fabric whether it's a rotary cutter or a pair of fabric scissors just some pieces from around the house to cut your circle shapes I'll go over those measurements in just a minute. And then of course your beautiful Ana Luisa jewelry to put in your finished piece. Here is my glass bowl from my kitchen and it is 10 inches in diameter. So roughly those measurements is great. And then my embroidery hoop over there is six and a half inches. So roughly these sizes are gonna be great. And then you can see if you put your bigger bowl in this corner, you have enough room to do a second one in this corner. And same thing this way so that you can get one entire jewelry pouch from one piece of fabric, or if you wanna use a coordinating fabric, you can make two. So go ahead and trace around your shapes. Here is my line. I know it's kinda of hard to see that blue, but you can go ahead and use a rotary cutter and carefully cut around that circle or you can use a pair of fabric scissors. Okay, I did this for two pieces of fabric, so now I have enough fabric cut to make two of these. So the next step is you need one large circle and one small circle from fabric one, and then a small circle and a large circle from fabric two, or all the same. So the next thing we're gonna do is sew around the outsides of these. So we're gonna place our right sides together, and if your fabric has little wobbles here and there, that's okay. We're gonna fix that over at the sewing machine. We can even some of those things out with our stitching. So we place these right sides together, and then we need to add some pins. Now they're pinned and we're gonna sew all the way around, but we're gonna leave an opening. That way we can flip it right side out. So let's head over to our sewing machine. Okay, so we are gonna be using about a 5 8 seam allowance. So I wanna come in slightly so that when we have the extra fabric, we can turn that in. You'll see that in a second. So about a half inch to a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Backstitch. So going all the way around and keep the edge of our circle with the edge of our presser foot and just slowly keep that going around. Take your pins out as you go. So this is what I mean, if you have a couple little spots that aren't quite even, that's okay. Just keep the outside edge along with your presser foot and then that stitch will be nice. Okay, we're almost back around to the beginning. So once you get about inch and a half away from where you started, give it another little back stitch. Cut your threads and then just set that aside for now and do the exact same thing on your smaller circle. Okay, now come over here to your ironing surface. Find your opening and we're gonna flip it right side out. Now the best way to get these seams kind of nice and flat as it's going around in a curve is to roll them underneath your fingers until that seam is on the outer edge. 
and all that bulk is worked in. So if you, you kind of roll it in between your fingers and then finger press it down as you go around, it's the best way that I've found to do that. Then once you have it kind of flat, then hit it with your iron and it will be nice and flat. So do the same thing for both the large and the small circle. When you get around to the opening, you wanna fold that fabric in and try to line it up as best as you can with that curve. You might have to fuss with it for a second and just do your best. And once you've got that in place, hit that with your iron also. And sew all the way around the circle to close up that opening. We're gonna do the exact same thing that we did before where we're using the right side of our presser foot to follow along the outside of that circle, but we're gonna move our needle position over slightly just to make sure that we catch that opening and make sure that everything is nice and secure. It will also help us to kind of sew down the seam allowance that's on the inside of our circle. When you get back around, back stitch again. While you're sitting here, go around and find your opening and make sure you caught that whole entire seam allowance. If not, add another little stitch just to make sure that you catch it so there's no raw edges coming out. Do the same thing for the small circle. Okay, now no need to get up from your sewing machine. We are going to sew the small circle on top of the large one. Now decide which one you wanna be on the outside. So we're gonna, you know, if we want the smaller floral print to be on the outside, then we're gonna sew the smaller circle to the inside. So do you see how, if you want it vice versa, then it would look like that. Okay, so decide what you want on the outside. I wanna have the small print on the outside. Now we wanna make sure we put this right directly in the center. And the best way to do that is to just fold our circle in half, create a crease, open it up, fold it in half the other direction, create a crease with our fingers, and then we'll have a little X marks the spot with the crease. You'll be able to see it much better in person than probably on camera but there are some creases here where we, we find exactly our center. We're gonna do the exact same thing with the smaller circle. And what I like to do is grab a pin and I put the pin through the X marks the spot on the small one. That way I can see exactly where it's going and I can then put the pin in the spot on the larger circle and then place it down. And you can double check yourself by measuring going around or just eyeball it. And if it looks right, we are going to kind of pin that down so it doesn't move around. Now we are going to sew. So decide how many pockets you want. So if you wanna have four pockets, we'll do one stitch, one stitch, and then we'll have four little pockets. So my smaller circle is five and a half inches wide. So I'm gonna measure two and three quarters from the side of my circle and then draw a line. This is a water soluble pen so I'll be able to just spritz it with water and get it out later. So you can draw all your lines at once if you want, that's probably best. Do two and three quarters and then use that line to make sure that you're going at a 90 degree angle so that everything is nice and straight. All right, now starting from the edge, you're gonna backstitch, sew all the way across, backstitch, just going to the edge of the small circle, and then sew all of those lines that you created. So go ahead and sew those down. All right, now we've got our pockets sewn. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all of my water soluble lines with a quick uh, spritz and press and trim all of my threads. All right, here's how it's looking. It's all nice and trimmed. Now what we're gonna do is create our channel for our ribbon or our cord or the way that we're gonna cinch it all up. So let's head back to the sewing machine. Set my presser foot down 
so that the left side of my presser foot is going to run along this inner circle. And my needle position is moved over slightly from the center. That way I've got, you know, more, more like a 3 8 or half inch seam allowance. We're going to do our first stitch around and then we're going to need to do another stitch going all the way around. So we've got to make sure we have enough room to do all of that. Go ahead and get started. Back stitch. When you get back around, back stitch again. Cut your threads. And then what we're going to do is now use that stitch to create another stitch going around. The, this just needs to be wide enough to fit whatever you're using as a cording. So we want to have enough room to let it move throughout our piece. You can always err on the side of larger than smaller. So I'm going to have my left side of my presser foot following that stitch and I've got my needle position as far to the right as it will go. Okay, let's go back over to the work table. Right, here's where you are going to need that fray check. And what we're going to do is going from the outside piece. So this is our outer, this is our inner. And from the outer, I just want you to find one of your stitches that goes directly across from each other. And I want you to add fray check into that channel. So into that spot that we just sewed to make our casing for our rope or our ribbon or whatever you're going to use. And I'm going to add some fray check. Then do that on the other side. So it kind of makes a little wet spot. Now that needs to dry. Measure how long your cord is going to be. So you want to go around like two times ish. Okay. That will be one side. And I'm actually going to double it up. So it's about 44 inches worth. And because mine's going to be double. So you could do about 22 to 24 inches if you're going to just have a single. I'll show you that more as we weave it through. But if you're using like grow grade ribbon or something like that, you won't need to double it up. So do that and get your length that you need. Okay, now take some sharp scissors or your fabric scissors. I have these really nice like pointy tip scissors. Find where that was. So it's going to feel a little different. It's going to feel stiffer where you put that fray check. That's what you want. Now we're going to slice only through our outer fabric. Don't go all the way through and slice your inside fabric. You only want to slice your outer fabric just in between these two stitches. So I made just a little snip to kind of get it going. And I'm not going all the way to the stitching. I'm stopping just short. And now that fray check is there, so it's secure. There could be a tiny bit of fraying, but that's okay. And there's nothing on the other side. So I only sliced this outer piece. Okay, do the same thing on the other side. Okay, now grab a safety pin. Doesn't really matter what size, just so that it's big enough to go inside your casing. Find your slice there and thread that through. And you wanna go all the way around, come back out the same side. Okay, come back out that same slit that we created and pull that through. You'll be able to trim these ends later on. Now you're going to get your other piece and if it's ribbon just pierce the end of your ribbon when you do this. Our string or our ribbon coming out of this side so we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to go from the other slit all the way around and back out. You might need to, there's another string in there, right? So you might need to kind of fiddle with it and get those about even, but that's why we have extra because as you're doing that, you kind of mess up, you end up messing with the other side also. That's the outside, right? So let's look at the inside, get it all in there, laying nicely, and then you cinch it up. And we've got our adorable little jewelry pouch. We've got our little pockets for our jewelry. So I want you to cut your yarn as if you have like the whole thing open, right? Because you're going to want to be able to open it up, be able to get your jewelry out of these little pockets. So 
we want to at least be able to open it about this far, let's say. And then at that point, trim, you know, you don't want a huge length because then when you cinch it up, then you'll have like this giant piece, but you know, maybe about here and knotting those ends will help it from getting sucked into that casing. All right, what'd you guys think? So cute, right? Really simple, uh, fun way to organize your jewelry or to gift your jewelry. Remember the Ana Luisa link, first link down below, and that will take you to their site where you can check out all of their beautiful jewelry. I've been loving wearing mine, so definitely check that out. And if you have any questions, leave those in the comments down below, uh, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.